وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول سورة البلد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد أيحسب أن لن يقدر عليه أحد يقول أهلكت مالا لبدا أيحسب أن لم يره أحد ألم نجعل له عينين ولسانا وشفتين وهديناه النجدين فلقت حمل العقبة وما أدراك ما العقبة فك رقبة أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسغبة يتيما ذا مقربة أو مسكينا ذا متربة ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة عليهم نار مؤصدة سورة البلد This surah is Makkiyah meaning is from the surah that came down before the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina this is from the surah that came down before the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to, to Medina some of the scholars they transmitted a ijma meaning a consensus ittifaq and they said that there's no dispute in this issue but there is there is dispute that it's not set that it wasn't set down it wasn't sent down before uh, the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina. There is a khilaf. But the overwhelming majority of scholars are of the opinion that it's what? That it's Surah Makkiyah. There are two other views. The second view is that it's Madaniya. It came down after the Prophet migrated to Medina. And the third view is it has Makkiyah in there and it has Madaniya. It has a combination of both. But the view that we will strengthen is that it's a Meccan surah. That this surah, Surah Al Balad, is a Meccan surah. Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, La uqusimu bihada al Balad. I swear. Allah is saying here, La uqusimu bihada al Balad. I swear by the city Mecca. And I want you to ponder here the way that I translated the verse. I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, I swear by the city, and the city here is referring to Mecca. But the ayah says, La uqsim. And I said, I swear by. This La, in La uqsimu, the scholars they have mentioned. They have mentioned different views of what is meant by it. Some of the scholars, they said, number one, that the la, in la uqsimu, the la in there, it is raddun li shay'in qad taqaddam. It is rejecting something that was previously mentioned. And some of the scholars, they said, the thing that's been rejected is, because the la here is when you reject something. What is rejecting is, their rejection of the resurrection. They did not. The surah is surah Makkiyah. Jurisprudent rulings, ahkam, haven't been sent down yet. 
So what they were rejecting was al-ba'ath, the resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was saying to them, la, it is not as you claim that you will not be resurrected. As Allah said in another ayah, زَعَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَلَّا يُبْعَثُوا قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَثُنَّ ثُمَّ لَتُنَبَّأُنَّ بِمَا عَمِلْتُمْ وَذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرُ زَعَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَلَّا يُبْعَثُوا The disbelievers, they claim that they will not be resurrected. قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي I swear by my Lord Allah, He said, I swear by myself, لَتُبْعَثُنَّ You will be resurrected, and you will be resurrected, and you will be resurrected. So the lahiyah is, رَدُّ لِشَيْءٍ قَدْ تَقَدَّمْ Rejecting something that was previously mentioned. The second view of scholars, they said that the lahiyah is za'ida, meaning it is not doing anything, but it's strengthening the meaning that's already there. The lahiyah is what? It's emphasizing on what was already mentioned in the verse. And they said it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said in the ayah, لِأَلَّا يَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ لِأَلَّا يَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ لِأَلَّا يَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ It means لِيَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ So the script, the people of the scripture know. لِأَلَّا هِيَ means أي لِيَعْلَمَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ So the people of the scripture can know. Does everyone understand the second one? The second one is that it's emphasizing the meaning that's already there, which is when Allah is saying, I swear by the city of Mecca, the la is not negating, but it's emphasizing that meaning. It's strengthening that meaning. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the ayah, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ What prevented you? مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن لَا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ what is preventing you, Iblis? مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ The ayah, it means لِتَسْجُدَ What is preventing you from, from prostrating to Allah Azza wa Jalla? As a za'ida. Th- and also the poet, the poet, the Arab poet, and the Arabs would do this. As the way that the Qur'an did it here, and he did it in the other two ayahs that I mentioned, the Arabs would also use it like that. There was a man who loved a woman called Layla. He really loved her. They call him Majnoonu Layla. He went crazy in love of her. And his line of poetry, he said, Tadakkartu Layla, I remembered Layla. I remembered her. Fa'atarini sababatum. And I got overwhelmed. And I went through burning love and passion for this woman, the love I have for her. Wakada samimu al-qalbi. And the core of my heart, it was close to what? لا يتقطع To break into pieces. What did you just say? لا يتقطع The لا here is زائدة. It doesn't mean not for it to break into pieces. It means for it to break into pieces. For indeed, for it to break into pieces. That's what it means. And the third meaning, the, fourth, the third meaning, the third meaning is that the لا here is a negation. Allah is saying, I am not going to swear in, I'm not going to swear by the city of Mecca while you're in there, Muhammad. Migrate from it. Leave it. While they're treating you like this, I will not swear by the city of Mecca. And that is the weakest of the, all the opinions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, La uqusimu, I swear by the city. Which city? Mecca. Mecca, brothers, was a place that was beloved to the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. And when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam migrated from Mecca, after being in Mecca 13 years after his prophecy, after he became a prophet, 13 years later, he was forced to leave what? He was forced to leave Mecca. And before he left Mecca, he looked at the Kaaba, and he looked at Mecca, and then he said to Mecca, Ma atyabuki, ma atyabuka. What is more greater than you, Mecca? What is more honorable than you? Min baladin, you're the best city. Wa ahabbaka ilayya, and you're the most beloved to me. 
walaula and if it wasn't anna qawmi that my people if it wasn't that my people Quraysh akhrajuni they took me out and they exiled me minki from you Mecca if my people did not exile me from Mecca and take me out ma sakantu ghayraki I would not have stayed in any other city other than you the messenger loved Mecca he left with a love for it and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he raised the station of Mecca and Allah referred to it as what? Ummul Qura the mother, mother of all cities let's mention some of the virtues of Mecca Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the ayah وَقَالُوا إِنَّ اتَّبِعِ الْهُدَى مَعَكَ نُتَخَطَّفْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا أَوَلَمْ نُمَكِّلْ لَهُمْ حَرَمًا آمِنًا يج... يجبى إليه ثمرات كل شيء رزقا من لدنا ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون Allah says وقالوا the disbelievers they said إن نتبع الهدى if we follow the guidance of Muhammad if we follow what Muhammad is preaching إن نتبع الهدى معك نتخطف من أرضنا our city of Mecca will be taken from us Muhammad if we follow you and we submit to what you're coming with نتخطف من أرضنا Mecca will be taken from us. We will be beaten. We will lose what we have. Allah then says, أَوَلَمْ نُمَكِّنْ لَهُمْ حَرَمًا آمِنًا يُجْبَى إِلَيْهِ ثَمَرَاتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah said, did we not make for them the city of Mecca a safe place? Right now, who's the one who's keeping it safe? Whilst all around Mecca, people were being robbed. People's wealth were be taken. Who is the one that saved it? Well, Quraysh, their caravan that they had, no one would touch it. Every other caravan owned by any other tribe will be taken and it will be robbed. Like in the people of Mecca, Quraysh, no one would touch theirs. Who is the one who did this for you? Allah kept Mecca safe. In another ayah, Allah wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ مَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ رَبَّ هَذِهِ الْبَلْدَةِ I was commanded to worship the Lord of this city, meaning Mecca, الذي حرمها, which Allah prohibited. Allah gave Mecca a sanctity. It's a sacred land. وَلَهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ Everything is for it. وَأُمِرْتُ And I was commanded أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ to be from the believers. Allah says in another ayah, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ Allah has made الْكَعْبَةَ الْحَرَامَةَ Allah has made Mecca what? Mecca, Qiyam al a place where people stand up and they pray and they remember Allah Azza wa Jalla. Then Mecca's affairs is very high. Mecca is what? Mecca is very high. But in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Ibrahim harram Mecca wa da'alaha. The Messenger said, it was through Nabi Ibrahim that Allah made Mecca a sacred land and it was Ibrahim that made dua for Mecca does anyone know what the dua of Ibrahim was for the people of Mecca what did he say what did he say Nabi Ibrahim, what did he say? Oh Allah, provide for the people of Mecca. Give them provision. As for the ones who disbelieve, even let them enjoy their time and then the day of judgment destroy them. So Mecca, Nabi Ibrahim made dua for them. And he made it a land, a sacred land, through him. Allah made it, but through Nabi Ibrahim. And the Prophet said, وَحَرَّمْتُ الْمَدِينَةِ I, Nabi Muhammad, this made the same for what? Medina, Kama Harama Ibrahima Ibrahimu, like Ibrahim did Mecca, Wada'u to Laha, and I have made dua for Fi Muddiha, Wasariha. I have made dua for the measurements of Mecca, the provision, the Mud and the Sa' are a type of measurement. Okay, four Mud is one Sa', and the measurement of one Sa' is 2.6. Zero zero kilograms. 
It's a measurement. Nabi Allah Muhammad said, I made dua for that. The way that Nabi Allah Ibrahim made dua for the people of Mecca. So Mecca is the highest when it comes in virtue. وَلِذَلِكَ One salah in Mecca is equivalent to how many prayers? A hundred thousand. Medina? One thousand. Baytul Maqdis? Five hundred. The question here is, is Mecca referring only to the Kaaba or the whole city? In other words, based on that answer, if you pray anywhere in Mecca, you get the 100,000. Or is it referring to the 100,000 only when you pray in the Haram? The strongest of the opinions is, it's referring to the whole entire city of Mecca. Wherever you pray in Mecca, because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what did he say? Subhanalladhi asara bi abdihi laylan Masjid al-Haram. Did the Prophet get taken from Masjid al-Haram or from his house? Which was in Mecca. Sah? Does everyone understand? Allah took the Prophet ﷺ from Masjid al-Haram. No, Allah took him from Mecca. But Allah referred to it as Masjid al-Haram because all of it is sacred. Sahih. <coughs> Allah then says, وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ and you, O Muhammad, are free of restrictions in the city. What does it mean? What does it mean? There are many views. The first view is That's one view. What does the word halun mean? A muqimun. You are a resident of Mecca, Muhammad, one who resides in Mecca. And the reason why Allah said that is they said, the ones who took that first view, they said, هَذَا تَشْرِيفٌ It's to honor Mecca. Because Nabi Allah Muhammad is residing with them. And Nabi Allah Muhammad is amongst them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some scholars, they rejected that first view. Because they said the word حِلٌ cannot come from the root word حَالٌ. Because حَلَّ يَحِلُّ حُلُولًا it should be. Not halan, I'm a halun. So they said, morphologically, the word that it was rooted from doesn't accept this. So the second view, which is, and the strongest view is the second, which is, wa anta halal. Sorry, the second view is, Muhammad. It is halal for you to fight in Mecca, and this was in the eighth year of the Hijri uh, of Fath al Mecca. The eighth year of the Hijriyah. Nabi Allah Muhammad, where did he come to? He came back to? He came back to Mecca. And when he came back to Mecca, what did he do? He fought in Mecca. So Allah told him, وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ It is permissible for you to fight in the, in the city of Mecca. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, وَإِنَّمَا أُحِلَّتْ لِي Mecca, I was allowed to fight in it Sa'atan min naharin A small portion of the day Waqad aadat hurmatuha And the prohibition of fighting in Mecca came back again After that time, it came back Ka hurmatiha bil amsi, the way that it was haram yesterday And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said Anyone who fights in Mecca and then tries to use my action The Prophet is saying this they say, Nabi Muhammad fought in it so I can fight in it. He said, tell them that I myself was allowed to fight in Mecca. Sa'atan, just a small time. And the prohibition now came back. No one is allowed to fight in Mecca. No one is allowed to fight in Mecca. And that's the strongest view. The third view is, وَأَنْتَ حَلَالُ الدَّمِّ فِي Mecca. Muhammad, your blood is halal in Mecca. Meaning they made your blood halal in Mecca. They want to kill you, Muhammad. وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ Means your blood has been made permissible. These people, they want to murder you. They want to kill you. They want to assassinate you. That's what they want to do. Um, the, the second view that I mentioned is the strongest view. 
The reason is because it's the view held by Abdullah ibn Abbas, Mujahid ibn Jabrin, Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi ibn Zaydin, Ata Dahak, Sa'id ibn Jubayrin, Ikrima, Atiya, Abu Salih Suddi, Hassan al-Basri. All of them, they took the opinion that it means that Muhammad, you are allowed to fight in Mecca for that, poor period, for that small period of time. Question. We just said that the surah is surah Makiya. And this is talking about what? Something that hasn't even happened yet. Who thought about that? Put your hand up if you thought about that question. Ha. The rest of you guys were, were absent minded, huh? Ida qalat hadami fa saddiquha fa inna al qawla ma qalat hadami. Just listen to the Shaykh. Whatever he says, don't ask a question. Anyone who says to his teacher, how? Asks a question, he won't find success. Some people, they believe that. Yeah? You have to think. The Quran wants you to think. Now the scholars, they say, this is this. Even though those are talking about the eighth year of the Hijriya. The scholars, they said, this is bin dala'il al The signs of the prophecy of the Nabi Muhammad. And Allah told him some of the unseen. Just like he said to him, Innaka mayitun wa innahum That you're gonna die and they're gonna die. Allah told the Prophet some things in the future that are going to happen, that are going to occur. And this is from the ijaz of the Quran, that the Quran is mu'jiz. It has these miracles in it that the messenger was told, Alimul Ghaibi. عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أحد إلا إلا من ارتضى من رسول Allah does not show and does not tell the unseen to no one He is the only one who knows it but sometimes He will tell some things to Nabi Allah Muhammad from the unseen some things that Allah wants the Prophet to know so this inshallah ta'ala the scholars they said the ones who say that it is a Meccan surah they said this ayah does not contradict our statement that it's a Meccan surah. This ayah is talking about something that's going to happen because Allah, He knows everything. Allah knows everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, وَوَالِدٍ وَمَا وَلَدٍ And by the father and that which was born of him. Allah is swearing by the father and He's swearing by the child. I'm, uh, that, I'm uh, the daughter, the child that is given birth. Here the scholars, they said, who is this child? And who is this father that Allah is swearing by? Some of the scholars, they said it means Nabiullah Adam. Some scholars, they said it means, it means Nabiullah Adam. That's one view. Another group of scholars, they said, and the children is his offspring. All of us. We are the offspring of Nabi Adam. So the father is Adam and the offspring is the children. Another group of scholars, they said, it is Ibrahim, who is the father, and the son is Ismail. Nabi Ismail, was he not mentioned in the Quran? The story... When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Nabila Ibrahim coming to his son, Inni raitu fil manami anni adhbahuka, faunzur mada tara. My son, I saw in a dream I was slaughtering you. What do you think? He said, Qala ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. My father, do as you are commanded. Satajiduni, insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, you're going to find me from those who are patient. You'll find me to be from those who are patient. So Ismail is the son of Nabi Ibrahim. Another view of scholars, they said, it's Ibrahim and his offspring. Because Nabi Ibrahim, he gave birth to the Banu Israel and the Arabs, they come from him. The Arabs go back to Ismail. And Banu Israel, they go back to Ishaq. And that's who the Prophet used to come from. 
The Prophet would either be from the Arabs, which is Ismail, or they would come from the Banu Israel, that was Ishaq. Some of the scholars, they said, the father is Ibrahim and the son is Nabilah Muhammad. Ala kulli hal ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the great Mufassir, when he brought all of those views, another group of scholars, they said, the parent, the father, uh, the father is referring to the one who can have children. I mean, the son is the one who can have children and the father is the one who can't have children. Different views like that. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the great Mufassir, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he left this all general. Allah, he left this all general. And since it is something Allah left general, then it should be left general. It should be left general. And it shouldn't be specified to any individual. Inna Allah aqsama bi kulli walidin wa waladi. Allah saw by every father and every son, all of them. Until he said, وَلَا بُرْحَانَ يَجِبُ التَّسْلِيمُ لَهُ بِخُصُوصِهِ There's no evidence to anyone who specifies one particular one. It encompasses everything. فَهُوَ عَلَىٰ عُمُومِهِ كَمَا عَمَّهُ It is unrestricted the way Allah made it general, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here it means all of those views and more. Allah swore by it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ By the way, Allah can swear by what He wants. Allah can swear by the creation. We are not allowed to swear by the creation. What do we swear by? The Creator, Allah Azza wa Jalla. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Allah said, we have certainly created man into hardship. Allah created us into what? Into hardship. Brothers, pay attention and focus here. Allah is saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ We have created mankind into hardship. This world, ya ikhwa, is a world of hardship. هَكَذَا خَلَقَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ it is like that Allah created it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةِ Allah creates and He does whatever He wishes. We don't have no choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for this world to be a place where we go through hardships. وَلِذَلِكَ Some of the people who are stressed, who are depressed, who go through anxieties, panic attacks, are a people who've imagined this world to be a place of joy. They've misunderstood the reality. This dunya was not created for you to enjoy and have fun. That's not what it was for. And so once you get to know that, it won't stress you out when the hardship comes because you are what? You are aware of it. This dunya is darum tihanin wa btila. Full of tests. أحسب الناس أن يترك وأن يقول آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فلا يعلم أن الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلم أن الكاذبين. It's a test. Allah wants to see who's truthful about his claim. I'm a believer. He will all say we're believers. Allah wants to put that to the test. If you want to go to Harvard University or Oxford, or Cambridge, or Yale. Can you just walk in? Huh? Can you just walk into Harvard? What do they want from you? Huh? They want to test you. The test is either they want years of qualification, and years of hard work, that's the test. Or they want you to do an entry exam. Huh? How do you want to go to Jannah without going through the test of time, the test of this world? امتحان and اختبار Allah is going to test you سبحانه وتعالى with different things Allah tests you with poverty بنقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات Allah takes the beloved people to you Allah will take money away from you سبحانه وتعالى and you will lose your money and you will become bankrupt and you will be in financial debt poverty will strike you all of that is it is a reality of this world. 
And some people, they try to lie to the people to draw a fancy world. This dunya, you have to understand. Allah is saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Kabad in the Arabic language, it comes from the word kabid. Does everyone know what a kabid is? Huh? It's the liver, right? The kabid is the liver. Here what it talks about is when the person feels pain to their liver. Yeah, I look at that. But the pain goes deep down and it hurts you deep down. You're suffering from within. Internal suffering. Allah said, I created this world like this. And I created you like this. Allah said that subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, some of the scholars, when it came to the ayah, la tarqabunna tabaqan an tabaqin ay ta'ab an ta'ab. Some of the Muslims, they say that. They said that you're going to go through one stress and one hardship after the other. But do you know the beautiful thing about a believer? Do you know the beauty about a believer? A believer? Through that hardship, he shines. He glows. He becomes stronger. Just like the gold. You take the gold and you place it inside the what? The fire. What happens to the gold when you put it in the fire? The real gold. Not the fake gold. What happens to the gold? It shines more. It shines more and it glows. The true believer, not the fake believer. When he's burnt and the hardship of this world comes his way, his Iman becomes stronger and more powerful. You all know the story of Fir'aun's magicians. The magicians of who? Fir'aun. Before they came to Fir'aun, or before they did the magic, they said to Fir'aun, أَإِنَّا لَنَا لَأَجْرًا إِن كُنَّا نَحْنُ الْغَالِمِينَ do we get a reward? What kind of compensation are we going to get if we take out Musa and we destroy him? Firhaun said to them, إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا لَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ I'm going to bring you guys close. If you beat Musa today and you show the world that it's me or nothing, I will bring you guys close. By the way, that statement by Firhaun said, I'm going to bring you close. It's the biggest thing a person can earn at that time. Firhaun was what? He was an ilah that they worshipped. Not a true ilah, but he claimed it. Ah, so to get close to God is what? In their eyes, something high. So everything, it unfolded. Who won? Allah gave the upper hand to Nabi Lahi Musa. فَأَلْقَى عَصَاهُ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ Fir'aun threw his stick and it was like it took everything. You know, like a chicken takes. It was like it took all of hibaluhum wa their sticks and their ropes and everything. He just swallowed it. And the magic that they came with. Look at Fir'aun. His magicians. They saw everything that happened, and these are the biggest magicians that existed. They realized that this is not normal what Nabi Lahi Musa came with, and they realized this is not magic because they're magicians. They know it. They know what sihir is. They knew he came with something different. And then they straight away they said, Qalu amanna bi Rabbi Harun wa Musa. We believe in the Lord of Harun and what? Straight away, this is the statement that came out of their mouth. Fir'aun responded and he said to them, Qala amantum bi qabla an adana lakum. You guys have believed in this Lord before I gave you permission. Innahu la kabirukum alladhi allamakum as-sihr. فَلَأُقَطِّعَنَّ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ وَلَأُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ فِي جُذُوعِ النَّخْلِ وَلَا تَعْلَمُنَّ أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا وَأَبْقَى I will cut your hands and your legs and I will hang you on the trees and I will punish you and I will severely torture you. What did they say? Hardship came their way, right? Fir'aun is going to do what he's going to do to them. And Fir'aun, Allah mentioned in another ayah, فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَهُ فَأَطَاعُوا إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ Fir'aun, he, he terrorized the people. Brothers, do you know why the body of Fir'aun was brought out? When Allah said, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً That Fir'aun, we're going to let your body remain. We're going to make it a sign for those to come. Do you know why? 
because the people were so scared of Fir'aun they thought he could never die. He terrorized them. He took over their minds. They believed that he couldn't die. Even when he got drowned, they wanted, to re- they wanted reassurance that he died. They wanted to see it. And that's why Allah showed them. Here he is. You have to understand how he took over their minds. Years of tyranny and oppression and wrongdoing. These magicians have the ability to say to Fir'aun in his presence, This is what? Strength. It's power. And then Fir'aun swears that he's going to torture them and he's going to destroy them. And what do they respond? There's no harm. No problem. Do as you wish. We're going to turn back to our Lord. Allah is going to, Allah is going to account us. And look what they said straight away. We wish for Allah to forgive us for our sins, what we did in the past. We really wish for that. You Fir'aun, do whatever you want. You see, now that the test came their way and the hardship came their way, they glowed. They shunned. Their strength came out. Are we all together, brothers? That's how the believers are. The more Allah tests them, the more Allah puts them through hardship, the more Allah, the more they glow and they shine. They don't wither. This is the reality of this. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ Allah said we, we created الْإِنسَانَ mankind. We created it what? فِي كَبَدٍ Into hardship. Allah said فِي كَبَدٍ Into hardship. You're inside hardship. On top of you is hardship. On your right is hardship. On your left is hardship. Below you is hardship. You're in the middle of hardship. You can't get out of it. So you have one of two choices. To either be patient and take it in and endure it and shine or else scream and cry, the hardship ain't going to stop. So it's your choice. You want to get reward for it, for what you go through. Or do you want to scream and you want to shout? Allah then says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Does he think, Does he think, here means, Does this individual, meaning the disbelievers, do they believe, really, is this in their heads, that, do they think that there is no one who's going to overpower them? Do they think that no one will destroy them? Is that what they think? Is that what is in their mind? This issue, brothers, it is in two ways that a person can fall under the ayah. Number one, is a person who clearly says, I don't believe God can do anything to me. kufru billahi. This is a disbelief of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the second type is a person who does sins, goes against Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's commands, like, like, no one's going to overcome him. Are we all together? I want you to understand this. And this is something that you need to take into point. Some people directly, they say statements of disbelief. They clearly say it. And another group of people, they live their life that no one is going to overcome them. Like there's no sin. I mean, they're going to do sins. They're going to go against the last commands. They're going to transgress and exceed their limits. That's what they're going to do. Both of those people, the ayah encompasses them. أَيَحْسَبُ Does he think this individual أَيَظُنُّ هَذَا Does this person think أَلَّا يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدٌ That never will anyone overcome him يَقُولُ He says أَهْلَكْتُ مَالَ اللُّبَدَى He says I have spent wealth in abundance I have spent wealth in abundance there are two interpretations regarding this verse, what it means. 
I have spent wealth in abundance. What does he mean by this? It is two. The first one is the kuffar. They claim to their friends of the kuffar. The nun, the kuffar will say to the kuffar amongst themselves, we have spent every money. We have spent all our wealth in abundance. Fi adawati Muhammadin in the enmity of Muhammad. They make organizations, they, th- they make think tanks. We spend everything. To destroy Muhammad and his message. Allah says in the ayah, يُرِيدُونَ أَن يُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ They want to extinguish the light of Islam. They want to get it over and done with. But Allah said, Allah is going to complete his light. This religion is going to go everywhere. Let the one love it, love it, and the one who hates it, hates it. This religion is going to go everywhere. The Prophet said, Allah is going to complete these affairs. And he's going to make it go to everywhere. It's going to go Mashariq al Ardu al it's religion. So that's the first view when it comes to Yaqulu, he will say, Ahlaktu, I have destroyed, I have spent Malalubada, my wealth in abundance. The second one is the munafiq, the hypocrite. He will falsely say, I have spent my wealth in defending the religion. He's a munafiq. But he will say to the people, to the Muslims, look at me. I'm spending what? I'm spending wealth. لِنُسْرَةِ الدِّينِ That's the second view. يَقُولُ He says, أَهْلَكْتُ I have spent مَالَ اللُّبَدَى Wealth in abundance. أَيَحْسَبُ Does he think? أَلَّمْ أَلَّمْ يَرَهُ أَحَدْ Does he think? أَيَظُنُّ هَذَا الْكَافِرِ Does this disbeliever think? أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَطَّلِعَ عَلَيْهِ Does he think Allah cannot see him? Does he really believe? that Allah cannot see him subhanahu wa ta'ala why would that ayah come meaning the munafiq and the disbeliever because I said remember two groups of people Allah is referring to in the ayah the kuffar who speak to themselves and they say we're spending money to destroy Muhammad and his message and the munafiqeen who lie to the Muslims and say look we're spending in you and we're doing this for you Allah says, أَيَحْسَبُ Do they think أَلَّمْ يَرَهُ أَحَدَ That Allah cannot see those two parties of people? Do you not think Allah can see you? You can lie to the people if you want. Lakin Allah can see everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can see all of that. That you're, spend, you're spending your wealth فِي الْبَاطِلِ in falsehood. And that which is not true. He's aware of it. However you try to show the people something different. However, you try to portray yourself that you're spending it, spending it in, uh, in the religion of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then said, Alam Allahu, Did we not make for him? Aynayni two eyes, walisanan, and a tongue, wa shafataini, and two lips, wa hadaynahu najadaini, and we have guided him and we have shown him the two ways we have shown him the two ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions here Alam naja'allahu aynayn what's the relationship with Alam naja'allahu aynayn and that which was mentioned before what's the relationship the relationship is two things Number one is if they say that they have spent this money in the deen of Allah, then Allah has given you a greater blessing than all of that. Allah has given you two eyes. Allah wa ta'ala, has given you a tongue. 
Allah has given you two lips which is more valuable than any wealth that you could give. The second view is we have made for them two eyes, a tongue, and two lips that we will use against him the day of judgment that will testify about, about his false claim. The false claim that he gave in this world and the lie that he made up. Allah is saying that the day of judgment we will use those that we've given him to prove that he's a liar and he's cheating the people. As Allah said in another ayah, اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. Allah will seal his mouth, and his mouth will not be able to talk because he's going to try to lie. And يوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم. His hands are going to talk. وتشهد أرجلهم. And his two legs are going to testify against him. In another ayah, Allah mentioned the person will say وقالوا لجلودهم لما شهدتم علينا. He will say to his body, why are you testifying against me? I'm trying to help you. I'm here to help you and save you from the hellfire. And here you are trying to take us to the hellfire. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then it would say to him, قَالُوا أَمْطَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَمْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ It wasn't us that made the speaking be able to happen. It wasn't us. Who was it that made it happen? Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah is the one. So now today, brothers, look at what you say with your tongue. Remember, it will be made to speak the day of judgment. Look at what, make, make sure you, you take care of what you look at and what you see with your eyes. Lower your gaze. Protect your eyes. The channel to your heart, brothers, is your eyes, two eyes. And your ears. And your mouth. All of these are the channel to your heart. That's what places dots on your heart. Allah then says, أَلَمْ نَجَعَلْ لَهُ Did we not make for him? عَيْنَيْنِ two eyes وَلِسَانًا and a tongue وَشَفَتَيْنِ and two lips وَهَدَيْنَاهُ and have shown him أَنْ نَجَدَيْنِ the two ways وَهَدَيْنَاهُ means Allah said we guided him Pay attention here In the Quran Allah said to the Messenger إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Muhammad, you cannot guide whoever you love. You can't. Who is the one who, who guides? Allah said, I'm the one who guides. Muhammad, you, know, you can't guide who you love. Who is he referring to here? Abu Talib. It was Abu Talib that the messenger was trying to guide. The messenger was trying to talk to Abu Talib and convince him so much he said, Qulu. He said, Kalim, say, La ilaha illallah. This. Hatta Muhammad al Rasulullah don't say it. Just say, La ilaha illallah. Kalimat. A word. Just say, La ilaha illallah. Just that. It will open a door for me to argue for you the day of judgment. I want to argue for you. Just say, La ilaha illallah. Even Muhammad al Rasulullah don't. Are we all together, brothers? And he tried hard. And Allah wa Taala said to the Prophet, "Inna kala tahdi man ahbabta, walakin Allah yahdi man yasha." Scholars they took a qaida from this, a principle, which is brothers exert the effort, work hard to spread the truth, but it's not your job whether the people accept it or not. That's not your job. Allah told us already, "Less ta'arihim bi musaytir." You're not. It's not your job to place the truth in the people's hearts. Say the haq. Say what is right. Innama alayka al Upon you is to convey, say the truth in a well-mannered way and leave the rest to Allah Azza wa Jalla. I remember one time I was speaking to my shaykh and I asked him a question and he, and he responded to me. And I said, shaykh, the people might say this, 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 this. And he said, it's not our job what the people say and why they say it and how they say it. Our job is to say what is true. If they take it, فَنِعِمَّاهِ Good. Allahumma barik. And if they don't take it, then that's not your job. Leave it to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Does that make sense, brothers? Convey the message and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the results. Question here now. Allah negated from the Prophet in this ayah, إِنَّكَ لَا, إنك لا تَهْدِي Muhammad, you do not guide. 
In another ayah, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ وَحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانُ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ مُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صَلَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And Muhammad, you guide to the straight path. So in one ayah, Allah is negating the Prophet from guiding. And in another ayah, Allah is affirming guidance for the Prophet. Uh, put your hand up, who knows how to reconcile between those two verses? Because we know that the Qur'an does not contradict one another. Allah says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا If the Qur'an was to come from other than Allah, then it would contradict. But because it came from Allah, it could not contradict. So there has to be a way to reconcile between the two. There's in one verse, Allah negated the Prophet from guiding. Allah said, إِنَّ كَلَاتَ دِي Muhammad, you can't guide. And in another ayah, Allah said, Muhammad, you guide. So the negating, and there's a negation here. You can't guide. And here, you can guide. Some people, they said this seems to be a contradiction. This is contemporary issues that people try to bring out of the Quran. Hey, yeah, put your hand up if you know the answer. And I will choose who I think can answer it. Ah. I'm not taking familiar faces. Ah. I pick people who don't who don't put their hands up. What's the answer to it? Allahu Akbar. What's the answer to it? I never mentioned it before. Iftikhar, what is it? I have mentioned it before. That's even better if I mentioned it before. Hey, Fadl. Yes. So, the, so slowly, we'll break it down for the people. Okay. Uh, what's the first one where Allah negated the guidance from the Prophet? What was that one? Uh, uh, so the brother said, that the first verse that I mentioned where Allah negated guidance from the Prophet was, you can't place the truth in the people's hearts. Meaning, that's the first type of guidance. There's two types of guidance. It's good. Hidayah to Tawfiq For you to follow the truth And to be upon the truth Muhammad you can't do that hey, yeah. The second one is called um, What is the second one? Where Allah says you guide Muhammad Hadahu Which is called Hidayah to Dalalati wal Irshad Showing the path Showing the path is, is a form of guidance as well Nabi Allah Muhammad can do that And every other person can do that To show the path Anyone who takes the path of the Prophet is showing the people the guidance. As for whether that guidance then goes into the people's hearts, it's only from Allah. They say you can take the camel, you can take the horse to the sea, but you can't make the horse drink from the water. You can't. You can't. But you can take him there. And that's the truth. So here Allah Ta'ala, here he's talking about Hidayatul Irshadi wa Dalala. Ha. Yeah, so the word in English may, be, may, may not be sensible to use the word guidance. Okay, because when you say guide, it, it means in English, hidayah to tawfiq only. Yeah, guide to the right. Yeah. That's all. But like in hidayah to irshad, in English would be more to show the path and not a guidance. Right? But Arabic, both of them are called hidayah. Yeah. hu. We have shown and najadayni the two parts. Brothers, what does it mean? I'm going to stop at this ayah. What does it mean? Allah is saying we showed the two parts. The path of good and the path of evil. Brothers, everything has been made clear to us. Wallahi. Wallahi, this religion, it clarified everything for us. Everything has been made clear to us. Everything has been made crystal clear. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? تركتكم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك. I have left you upon a clear path. تركتكم على المحجة البيضاء. I have left you upon the clear path. محجة means path. 
I have left you on the clear path. There is no night. It's all day. So when somebody comes and says the religion is not black and white, the Prophet said it's all day. The religion is all white. It's all clear. Are we all together, brothers, here? Everything. Everything is crystal clear. تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْمَحَجَّةِ لِتِلْبَيْضَاءِ I have left you upon clarity. When you say the whole religion, the, yeah, Allah, the deen is not black and white. You're saying, Nabi like Muhammad left us on ambiguity. He left us unclear that no one knows what's right from what is wrong. And we all together, brothers, every single thing was made clear. And we all together, brothers. The Prophet is saying this. SubhanAllah, it's so ajeeb that the phrase that they use when they say the religion is not black and white, and what the Prophet said here is so directly opposite to each other. The Prophet is saying it is all white and not dark. And it's not black. And then they're saying it's not black or white. Sah, brothers? And the only person who doesn't recognize that path is a destroyed individual. The only person who is they, so clear, why are you getting lost? And we're all together, brothers. You know what Abu Dhar said? Abu Dhar, he said, لَقَدْ تُوفِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدْ دَعِيْهِ وَمَا طَائِرٍ يُقَلِّبُ جَنَاحِيهَا And there was no bird that flapped its wing in the sky إِلَّا ذَكَرَ لَنَا مِنْهُ عِلْمًا Except he told us something about it. He's trying to say we were told everything. Brothers, if our messenger told us that when we go to the toilet, how many rocks that we need to use for our call of nature and what we need to use water and not is he going to leave our aqidah think about that he told us when we go to the toilet how to clean ourselves would that religion leave off the creed issues and not clarify that are you with me brothers a man came to Salman al-Farisi and he said Salman your Prophet has told you everything, huh? Salman didn't say, yeah, the religion is black and white. He said, Naam. Our Prophet, he told us everything. Hatta al-Khira'ah, he told us how to do the call of nature. He told us, Allah nastaqbil al-qiblata wa Allah nastadbiraha. He told us, don't face the qibla when you're doing your call of nature and don't turn away your back towards the qibla when you're doing your call of nature. He also told us not to use less than three stones. He told us not to use our right hand. All of that he said he told us. There's a narration that the Prophet ﷺ, one day he came into the masjid, he stood on the pulpit. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stood up. After Salatul Fajr. Salaamu alaykum, salaamu alaykum for Fajr. He stood up. Fakhataba Rasulullah. The narrator said that the Prophet gave a khutbah. Until Salatul Dhuhr. فَصَلَّ الظُّهُرْ He prayed dhuhr. He said, Salaamu Alaikum and Salaamu Alaikum to dhuhr. He stood up again. And then he gave a khutbah up to Asr again. He led Asr. He said, Salaamu Alaikum and Salaamu Alaikum. He stood up again. Up to Maghrib. He led Maghrib. He said, Salaamu Alaikum and Salaamu Alaikum. He went again up to Isha. The narrator, he said, حَافِظَهُ مَنْ حَافِظَهُ أَمَا عَالِمَهُ مَنْ عَالِمَهُ وَجَهِلَهُ مَنْ جَهِلَهُ The one who knew what the Prophet said in that khutbah and memorized it, had memorized it and the one who forgot it, had forgot it. And you know what the narrator said? He told us of what was, what was happening and that which is to happen. Are we all together brothers? When you say that this religion is not clear, it's not, it's black and white. You're saying that Nabiullah Muhammad the day of Hajjatul Wada' when he said to his companions, Did I not convey the message to you? And they all said, Bala. Of course you have. And the messenger took his finger and he pointed it towards them and he pointed it towards the sky because Allah is above his throne. And then he said, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, testify, witness to this that I have conveyed everything. You're saying that 124,000 companions that day who were in front of the Prophet were all lying that the message didn't convey everything to them.
and he left him a plum black and white. Clarity. Are we all together, brothers? Clarified everything for them. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If it's not clear, then that's not clear to you. Don't ascribe it to the religion and say the religion is not black and white. Say my knowledge is not black and white. Or I don't know this issue, it's not clear to me. It's a subjective issue. For you, it's not clear. Like in this deen is kashamsu fi rabi'atin nahar. It's like that day. Anything that will... The Messenger of Allah said in another hadith, ma min nabiyin, there is not a prophet, illa kana alayhi, except that it was obligatory on him, an yadulla ummatahu ala khayri ma ya'lamuhum lahum. Except that it was obligatory upon that prophet to tell his people anything that will take them to Jannah. Well, listen to this. Every prophet that came, Allah made it obligatory upon that prophet to tell his people anything that will bring them close to Jannah. And it was upon that prophet to tell them every single thing that will distance them from the hellfire. This is, was every prophet, not, not only Nabi Lai Muhammad, all of the prophets. So stay away from that statement of where you say that the religion is not black and white. That really stems from the concept of skepticism where there's no objective truth. Keep that in mind. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned that in his kitab Dar'u Ta'arudu Al-Aqli wa Al-Naql. I'm going to stop there inshaAllah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiru khatubu.